Gloria Swanson first rose to fame starring in dozens of films in the silent film era of the 1920s. She was nominated three times for Best Actress at the Academy Awards. After taking a lengthy break from Hollywood at the peak of her acting career, Swanson famously made a return to film, appearing in Billy Wilder's 1950 classic Sunset Boulevard. That performance earned her a Golden Globe and is widely regarded as one of her best roles. Swanson was born in Chicago, Illinois on March 27, 1899 and raised in a military family that moved around quite a bit. When she was a schoolgirl, she developed a crush on actor Francis X. Bushman. It was because of this little bit of childhood puppy love that Swanson's aunt took her to tour the actor's Chicago studio. When she was 15, Gloria was offered a small walk-on role as a film extra, thus kicking off her life's career in the spotlight. She was then given a job working in California for Keystone Studios doing comedy shorts alongside Bobby Vernon. She was soon recruited by Paramount, where she was signed to a seven-year contract. From that point on, she was an international superstar. In 1919, she appeared in Cecil B. DeMille's film Male and Female. She followed that role up with roles in box office hits, The Affairs of Anatole, and Beyond the Rocks. She went on to produce and star in the groundbreaking 1928 film Sadie Thompson, which earned her her first Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. Swanson made the jump to talkies when she starred in 1929's The Trespasser, which earned her another Academy Award nod. In the 30s, her success began to wave, and she wasn't active for the next couple of decades until her appearance in Sunset Boulevard marked her triumphant comeback. While Gloria certainly had one heck of a professional career, her stabs at love proved to be less successful. She married six times and struggled to maintain her romantic relationships. Join Facts First as we attempt to determine why she couldn't find lasting love throughout her life and career. Husband number one, Wallace Beery. Swanson married Wallace Beery on her 17th birthday on March 27, 1916, but the marriage seemed to be doomed from the start, as by their wedding night she already felt as if she'd made a huge mistake. Gloria had little appreciation for Beery's home or his family. Beyond that, he repulsed her as a lover. After becoming pregnant with his child, she discovered her husband was running around with other women and had been fired from his job at Keystone Pictures. She started taking pills that Beery had given her. He claimed they were supposed to help with morning sickness, but in reality, they were meant to abort the baby. After the fetus died, Swanson fell unconscious and had to be taken to the hospital. When she recovered, she filed for divorce, which was finalized in December 1918. Husband number two, Herbert K. Somborn. Swanson married then-president of Equity Pictures, Herbert Sonborn, on December 20, 1919. The couple had one daughter together, Gloria Swanson Sonborn, who was born on October 7, 1920. In 1923, they adopted a one-year-old baby boy named Sonny Smith, who was later renamed Joseph Patrick Swanson. Somborn and Swanson's marriage quickly fell apart, and at their divorce proceedings, Herbert accused her of cheating on him with 13 men, including Marshall Nealon and Cecil B. DeMille. The scandal that ensued led to Swanson having a morals clauses added to her Paramount Studios contract. The couple's divorce was finalized on September 20, 1923. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more on Gloria Swanson's husbands. Husband number three, Henri de la Falaise. While filming Madame Saint Jean, Swanson met and fell in love with Henri, Marquis de la Falaise, who was hired on to serve as her translator during production. Even though Falaise was a marquis and was a blood relative of the wealthy Hennessy Cognac family, he had little wealth to speak of himself. Gloria got pregnant with Henri's child before her divorce with Somborn had been finalized. This situation only added to the public controversy that she was contending with and threatened to put an abrupt end to her film career. Swanson ended up getting an abortion, but would later say she regretted doing so. She and the Marquis exchanged wedding vows on January 28, 1925, shortly after her marriage to Somborn had been dissolved. After taking four months to recover from the abortion, the couple returned to the States as European nobility. Swanson then held the prestigious title of Marquise. Upon their return to the country, they were welcomed with a lavish celebration that included parades in both LA and New York City. Once again, however, her marriage wasn't made to last, as this union too ended in divorce in 1930. 
Despite splitting up, Swanson and Henri remained close friends. He proved to be one of the biggest allies in her efforts to aid scientist refugees fleeing the Nazis in the Second World War. Swanson's Affair with Joseph P. Kennedy While Swanson was still wed to Henri, she engaged in a rather lengthy affair and later married the father of JFK, Joseph P. Kennedy. Kennedy first was her business partner, and after they started dating, their relationship was considered an open secret in Hollywood. He took over all her business and personal affairs and promised to make her millions, but that never happened as he left her after the film Queen Kelly proved to be a significant commercial failure. Husband number four, Michael Farmer. After breaking up with Kennedy and still reeling from her failed marriage to Henri, Swanson struck up a relationship with the man who would become her fourth husband. The two met by chance while in Paris, while Swanson was being fitted by famed fashion designer Coco Chanel for her role in the 1931 film Tonight or Never. Farmer was independently wealthy, although he didn't seem to have ever been employed. Rumors began swirling he was some kind of gigolo, but that has never been confirmed. Not long after meeting him, Swanson discovered she had a lump in a breast. She also came to realize she had become pregnant. Gloria expressed a desire to break off her relationship with Farmer, but he didn't want to let her break off the budding relationship. When he found out about the pregnancy, he basically blackmailed her by threatening to go public unless she married him. She didn't want to do this, but despite her wishes and the objections of her friends, who all seemed to despise the guy, the two got married August 16, 1931. Since her divorce to Henri was yet to be finalized at the time, Swanson was forced to remarry Farmer the following year. On August 5, 1932, Gloria gave birth to her daughter, Michelle Bridget Farmer. A little over a year later, she and Farmer separated. Husband number five, William Davy. This well-off investment broker and Swanson met in October of 1944 while she was starring in A Goose for the Gander. They got married January 29, 1945. At first, Gloria thought she'd finally be able to retire from acting by Davy's side, but not long after they walked down the aisle, cracks started to form in their marriage due to his rampant alcoholism. He started acting erratically, and bitter accusations soon followed. Swanson and her young daughter Michelle went to AA meetings where they acquired pamphlets promoting the group. They placed these all around the apartment where they and Davy lived. Instead of taking the hint and taking steps towards getting sober, Davy moved out. He unsuccessfully filed for divorce, claiming Swanson had been mentally cruel. A year later, he passed away and left the majority of his estate to the Damon Runyon Memorial Fund without paying Swanson a penny. Husband number six, William Duffy. Swanson married her sixth and final husband in 1976. Duffy was a writer who worked for the New York Post for many years as an assistant to the editor. He also authored or co-authored several books, including Lady Sings the Blues, a biography of Billie Holiday, Sugar Blues, a 1975 health book that's still in print, and the English version of the George Osawa book You Are All Sanpaku. The two met in the mid-60s and moved in together shortly after striking up a romance. The couple bonded over a shared enthusiasm for macrobiotic diets and enjoyed traveling the world together speaking about nutrition. They remained happily married until Swanson's death in 1983. Duffy passed away of cancer in 2002. Now it's time to hear from you. What are some of your fondest memories of Gloria Swanson? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.